Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Secret Origins of Mint Condition. I am one of your hosts today, James, and joining me also, our returning guests, is Jack. Hello, everybody. And John. Hey, everyone. And Keith. Hi, guys. And Kevin. Hello, hello. And I usually give them a longer intro, but I, I'm skipping that today because the guest we have on the show today needs all the intro time we can give him. He has had a 60-year career in radio, TV, movies, video games. He is the voice of our childhood. You might know him when you were, were feeling cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs <laughs> or maybe scared to have some Count Chocula. <laughs> Or maybe you know him as the voice of Bluegrass from, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on the name of the show. Silverhawks. Silverhawks, yes. I'm just so overwhelmed. overwhelmed. It's already showing. And of course, if you're listening to the show um, and you've seen the name of the guest, you probably know him as the man who taught us justice, truth, honor, and loyalty, giving us the founding principles of morality as as children. He is the voice of the Lord of the Thundercats, Lionel himself. I am humbled, honored, and obviously speechless. Welcome, <laughs> Mr. Larry Kenny, to the show today. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, very nice, James. Thank you so much. I'm pretty impressed by that uh, thing, too. I didn't realize I had done all that stuff. I guess I have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've, you've done it all. You've been in every medium uh, yeah, since the much. beginning. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. I, I know you've... T- I know you've done a lot of interviews, so I don't want to kind of rehash stuff that you've done before. I want to try to make this interesting okay. for you, but uh, but I think it is. I think given your career, it might be good just to give a little summary of 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 how you got into voice acting and acting, just a little bit. Sure. Well, I, I started in the business in radio. Uh, I'm from a, a little town outside of Peoria, Illinois, and uh, Pekin. Yay, Pekin! Uh, when I was, <laughs> when I was 15 years old, I had been doing a, uh, we had a radio class, uh, at school, at the high school, which looking back on it now, was, I can't believe, you know, that we had that. We had a state of the art, uh, uh, studio and, um, we didn't have a transmitter. So we did the show over phone lines on the local radio station, a, a, a 10 minute show at lunchtime every day, uh, from school where uh, there were three or four of us and we would talk about what's the, the menu today at school so the mothers would know what not to make for dinner and stuff like that and then we'd you know maybe interview the basketball coach and stuff like that so i i, I did that and then one day um this guy calls me who had heard the show i guess and uh from uh the the big radio station in the area wirl in peoria and said we're looking for somebody you know to do something. so i went and auditioned and um, on a Saturday morning at about 11 o'clock and, uh, I left the, 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 the booth and, uh, the guy said, uh, you're hired. And I said, wow, great. When do I start? He said, four o'clock. <laughs> so, <laughs> put me on, he put me on the air three hours later, which I think was a good thing. I didn't have time to get all, you know, nervous and shook up. So I started, I started in radio in 19, uh, Jesus. 63. <laughs> Remember 1963, guys? Of course you don't. Uh, <laughs> yes. It was a good year. <laughs> it was a damn good year. For me. It was a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I got started. And I had always done, um, <clears throat> even before that, my mother tells me that from the time I could talk, I was doing impressions of what I saw on television. The cartoon shows, you know, and... Um, famous people and everything. And uh, I always loved doing that. When I got in, you know, into school, especially high school, I found, as uh, most of us guys do, that uh, uh, girls, if you make the girls laugh, they love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> girls love a guy that makes them laugh. And it gets you invited to all the best parties because you, they want you to entertain them and everything. So the, the voices um, you know, came in handy for a lot, for a lot of reasons. No, it sounds that sounds great. I mean, that's a, that's a great entry point. Um, I'm gonna um, sort of just pass it along to whoever wants to ask questions now. I mean, Kevin, I'm actually gonna highlight you. Kevin is your is our diehard Thundercats fan here. And where uh, does he hail from? Illinois. Get out of here. About a hundred miles away. Yeah, uh, DeKalb. Where? It's about like hundred and fifty miles. DeKalb. Okay. DeKalb. Of course. Illinois? Yeah. yeah. DeKalb. Sure. Well. <laughs> I don't know what Illinois. Us Midwesterners have to stick together. Damn right. 
<laughs> I don't know what uh, the people in the Calm say. To, you know, to, to, you know, go. We say go uh, dragons, speaking dragons. You know, but I know the Calm. Oh, sure. I, sure. Yeah. I I uh, <laughs> I went to school. I grew up there, and, and I went to school there, and everything. But I left in um, in um, you know after college. I went to Western Illinois University, and then I went to Bradley in Peoria. And then I uh, mm -hmm. left. I went first to Fort Wayne, Indiana. In, this was all on radio. <clears throat> Fort Wayne, Indiana, and then um, uh, Cleveland, Chicago, and then finally in New York. And I've been in New York now for uh, next year. It'll be 50 years, I think. Yeah. Wow. wow. I, yeah, I had a question about that. Um, I was reading that the rec like, you recorded the show for Thundercats in New York. And I've always associated animation with more of a California thing. Was it very common no. back then to have a show in, in New York or? Not at all. We were all shocked when, okay. when our agents called and said, you're auditioning tomorrow for a, a new animated show that'll be recorded here in New York. And everybody thought, those are done in California uh, or sometimes Florida, you know, Disney. But um, yeah, uh, as far as I know, no, you know, animated uh, shows were, were done in New York until that time, 1980. We started working on 83, actually, on Thundercats. It was a big surprise, and, and, you know, all the New York actors were happy. So was everyone on the show then a New York-based actor? Yeah, yeah, we were all in, we were all New Yorkers. Forget about it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I, I had a question about the production. So New York, 1984, we all, we all grew up in this area. And Kevin, you eventually moved out, you know, you know Long Island mm -hmm. is where we, m most of us sort of met or, or grew up over the years. And the city in the 80s always had this sort of scary image. <laughs> oh, my God, it's New York City. It's, it's like Gotham City. You know, Batman isn't there, though, so the crime is really bad. And... <laughs> It was, yeah. You know, now living in a city myself and hearing all the stories from back then, I hear that it was also kind of an awesome era. What, what was it like to be in entertainment and recording, like, in the 1980s in New York City? Well, you're right. And do you have any crazy stories <laughs> during that time? None I, can, <laughs> none I can tell you, John. Uh, <laughs> you're right, John. The uh, New York in the 80s was kind of gritty and, you know, New York's always had that, uh, that kind of, among large cities, it's considered kind of gritty and in some cases like in the 80s dirty because things were bad in the in the 80s in new york um, crime the streets were filthy the, the you know garbage wasn't picked up stuff like that but um uh in terms of recording and in, in, in the entertainment business it was really a good time it was a, if you look back on it the things that came out of new york in the 80s showbiz wise were fantastic and I don't know what the uh, relationship was to the, uh, the atmosphere of the town, but I do remember that uh, when I first came, well, I, I first came to New York in 74, and uh, things were pretty good then. But by, but by the early 80s, uh, 42nd Street, you wouldn't even want to go there, you know. And for those of you familiar with 42nd Street, it's, well, there was a movie, 42nd Street, and a Broadway show, 42nd Street. It was the entertainment area. 15, the, 15 or 20, you know, Broadway theaters and this and that. Um, but by the time in the 80s, if you'd walk down 42nd Street, there was a, a Broadway theater. But, that, but in between the, that and the next Broadway theater were four or five porn movie places and porn shops and things like that. And drug dealers everywhere, you know. And, and so it was, it was kind of a, kind of a, a weird uh uncomfortable time in, in New York, actually. But th then that's that all went away, and now it's back to its its former uh, glory. Wow, that's, ama that's amazing. I mean, you know, just to, like, go, th go through that time and that period in New York. Yeah. So it sounds like a taxi driver was encapsulated, the, like, that era very well. Watching it now, I'm always like, wow, that's so seedy. Oh, oh, but I, I guess... It <laughs> the movie, yeah, the movie. Yeah. 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 I mean, I recognize a lot of stuff in it from that movie. So. <laughs> but I don't like to dwell on that now. I mean, I'm happy to answer your questions, but um, uh, cause I, yeah. I love New York and it's the greatest town in the world. And But that period, maybe a 10-year period, uh, uh, was was really, you know, I mean, you had to be careful everywhere you went. And uh, race relations were terrible. 
and um, uh, but but now you know it's a great city again. Oh, so so you were so we said a minute ago so you were there when there was very little recording being done. So that's sort of the beginning of this new New York era, but it's also a new entertainment era. Mm-hmm. So did, did a lot of other shows, did you, did you get a lot of, did you sort of like become a trendsetter for where animation was going or where voiceover work was going? Well, uh, yeah, as I said, Thundercats was the first uh, uh, animated show that, that I know of that was ever recorded in New York. And, and now I've forgotten exactly uh, the point of your question. I am 100 years well, old. It sort of feels like you were that a in mind. I'm 112 years old. I'm sorry, what was the point of your question? I was saying, it sort of felt like you were a trendsetter with that, you know, starting a whole new market and a whole new you know, area of voiceover work happening in New York. You know, I, I really haven't thought of that, ex- except like I mentioned, it was the first show. But you're right, because uh, now there's a lot of stuff done here, you know, with, with uh, Comedy Central, well, with, with um, Cartoon Network and Net, uh, I'm sorry, not Netflix, but yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff done here in New York now. Well, I'm doing a, a couple of things now uh, in New York. Um, I, I play a part on uh, Teen Titans Go. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's for small kids. And um, <laughs> as I said, I, I, we're, and us. we just started a new, <laughs> I just started a, a new job uh, two days ago on a show called Pokemon Horizons. And... Um, Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's, it's so far. I did one episode so far, and it, it seems like it's going to be fun. But yeah, it's uh, it's not unusual now to have, you know, to, to, for something to be recorded, uh, animated show to be co- recorded in New York. Um, video games, a lot of them are done here now. I, I, I've worked for several times on um, uh, a game called um, Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't know if you guys know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Did oh, you do the motion capture? Yeah, that? motion. Capture. I read that somewhere, but I didn't see any citation or anything. Yeah. Motion capture. That's a whole new deal, man, for me. Um, I was always in, you know, just on the microphone. Never. Well, I was on camera. I did before a lot of things on camera, but this motion capture, you don't just go into a booth and, and read lines. You know, you get there and they put a, a head to toe Lycra suit on you. And a, like a helmet thing with um, a thing that comes out like this and then down. So there's a bright light in front of you. And, and, and they put these little things all over you that the com- so the computers can, can learn exactly the way you move. It, it's, it's hard to explain, but um, so I won't. It's... <laughs> <laughs> something entirely different but uh yeah there's a lot of stuff being done now in new york jack i saw you were you had a question before yeah so no um, no jack was late he I, gets to, no, no questions jack was, <laughs> oh. I, 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 I i relinquish my time lionel um, has spoken exactly exactly <laughs> um where's the code of thunder when you need it um so <laughs> You know, I was I was wondering. Um, so when the, it was recorded, uh, I know you received the script, but did you also have uh, the the actual animation to work off of? Um, how did they match essentially your dialogue um, with the actual uh, screening? And so, like, if you could walk us through like what the process looked sure. like, since uh, it was all of it was kind of done separately. Yeah, the the voices are first. They record the voices first. Um, mainly because if you did it the opposite way where like they showed us the animation and we tried to match our lip, you know, our, our words to their lips and everything, it would take forever to do that. So you, they, they recorded us first, us being the voice actors. And then they, uh, they would send that to, uh, Japan and the animators would animate to our voices, uh, and not the other way around. Uh, but I will say that, that there's a new thing now called ADR, um, w- which is involved in this new show I'm doing, uh, Pokemon Horizons, where they, the animation has already been done because this show has been on in Japan for years. And so they're taking that animation, and what we're really doing is overdubbing it. So uh, what happens is I'm in the, I'm in the booth, you know, the recording booth. 
and I've got a, a monitor and uh, they will play the video for me. And on the bottom of the screen uh, are my lines. And there's a red mark in the bottom, uh, bottom uh, halfway through the screen so that when they say three, two, one, and then they start playing the video, I see my lines coming across. And when, it, when, it, when my line gets to the red mark in the middle, I start talking. So we actually now are, with ADR, are, are recording, are try, matching what's on the screen already. It's a, it's a whole different new thing for me. But um, I like it because it's just like the, the, the motion capture. It's, it's, it's new. And it's, it's exciting, you know, and it's not the same way I've been working for the last 60 years. And I like new things like that. It kind of keeps you young, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. I had a production question. Yes. I've been reading about behind the scenes a little bit, and uh, the name of Lee Daniger comes up often. Lee Daniger. I think she was Lee Daniger. Yeah. I think she was the producer for the the vocal recordings. Could you go into what her role was and Certainly. anything about like anything you remember about her? She was the director. She would be when okay. we're recording, we're in the studio. Uh, she's on the other side of the glass in the control booth, you know, where the engineers doing all this stuff. And she was, Lee was wonderful. She passed a couple of years ago. So sad, too much to you. Uh, and she was such a sweetheart. She would be the one who would say, uh, okay, guys, uh, settle down, settle down. Come on. Because, <laughs> you know, you get five actors in the studio and there's, well, you've heard the outtakes, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so she Certainly. was so sweet about, uh, she was just a little tiny thing and she, but she can control us with just a, a look or a word. She said, okay, guys. Okay, guys. Now in this scene, uh, uh, Lion O is really upset or this, and, you know, kind of give you an idea of what's the overview, the background of what you're, what you're doing. And uh, yeah, she was, the, she was the director and she would be the one who would say, we, we, she said, okay, let's, Take eighty five, okay, you do it, and we would do it. Nah, 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 and she would, she would always go, "That was good. That was great. Can we do one more?" Where you? <laughs> <laughs> that was her job, you know. Good, exactly right. But she was fantastic. Yeah. And then, um, how did? So everyone did so many side bit parts, like uh, a random burble or uh, one of the loon attacks. How was it decided who would? get those roles and how did you keep it consistent over different episodes like a muck isn't in every episode but i think you did a muck yeah um, I think so too how would you can keep that consistent <laughs> uh, across you know what's well, a, a great episodes? that's a great two-part question i think the first part was how would they decide who's going to do the voices of course initially we all had to come in and audition they auditioned probably 300 actors in new york and la for the show you know and then it came down to this number and this number and this number, this number. So at first you would audition for, um, uh, they wanted you to audition for one Thundercat and one mutant, you know, Mumra's boys. And then, then after we started recording, when new characters were added, um, it worked in various ways. A lot of times Lynn, uh, I'm sorry, Lee Doniker would say, okay, we got a new character and he's this and this, or she's this and that. Who wants to give me an idea of what he would sound like? So we'd say, how about this? And, you know, like, let's say for, um, oh God, one of the lunatics, I don't know. Uh, I would, I would, you know, she would give us the lines or we've already had them in our script. So we would, whoever wanted to would, would give an idea what, and then she would pick which one, you know, uh, it should be, and you'd go from there. The second part of your question is, I think, how do you keep track of the voices you did two years ago and stuff like that? Yeah, they would always they would just uh, play back. Play, they had it recorded, of course, so they would just uh, play back what we did. Because there are many times, uh, you know, okay. Because you know, some of your some characters that uh, that I did and everybody did uh, would only have appeared in four or five episodes or whatever, but then they would bring them back you know, a year later, because it took us three years to record Thundercats. So, um, and I'll explain that to you later if you want. But, um, so they would they would play back and you'd listen to it and say, ah, 
I remember now. Now, now I remember what you sounded like, <laughs> and you could redo it. That's cool. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Oh, so, I guess I have I a question you, that sort of piggybacks sorry, off I'm that. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I will tell you one funny thing about that particular thing. That <laughs> oh, was, please. There was at least one uh, uh, um, occurrence like that when one of my characters that I had done 14 episodes before or whatever came in for a couple of lines in a new episode. And I said, okay, play it back. So they played it back for me, and I thought, oh, I had such a cold that day. <laughs> I was all stuffed up and you could hear it, you know, and, and but it helped the character at the time. And today I don't have a cold. <laughs> so I just kind of went. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> try to match what I had done, you know, a year ago. Well, I never noticed as a kid that it was at all different. So. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's because I'm a semi professional uh, I was just going to say, uh, you can interrupt me anytime uh, you want, because right. now I can say I was interrupted by Lionel Lord of the Thundercats. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in your resume. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> um, so I guess my question kind of piggybacks off that. It was, um, you had mentioned, you know, being part of a voice cast back then, you all generally, generally recorded together in the same room. and. Yeah. That doesn't tend to happen as much anymore, I guess. No, it does um, not, no. Do you think that's, is it, I mean, I imagine that's a better experience for you, but do you think that helps the show and, you know, have it be a better experience for the audience and the cast since you can cue off each other maybe a little better? Definitely. You you must be an actor. Are you an actor? No. Because no. <laughs> any actor will tell you, especially- Only at home with my wife. <laughs> We well, don't want to hear about that, okay? Because this is a, <laughs> uh, it's a good question, and and um, yeah, any actor will tell you it's whether it's well, especially in voiceover. When we when we did the show Thundercats and Silverhawks and Tiger Sharks and all of those, we were all in the studio together. Every time we recorded, they had a, a, a semicircle of microphones for the five of us, and and. We would all be in the studio together all the time. Uh, minor exceptions. Maybe once in a while, Lee Doniker would, would come out while we we're having lunch and say, uh, Larry, I'm sorry, but we just, we just need you to do one one line. Over, you know. Then you go in and there. But almost entirely, the show was recorded with all the actors there. Uh, today, it's as you mentioned, it's not the same. Now they put one person in a booth. He records his lines or she records and then you leave and the other person might come and, and then uh, you don't work together anymore. And I, I, uh, I miss it for a lot of reasons. The first one being what you mentioned, that it's a better performance for an actor if you have someone to react to. That's what acting really is. Uh, as I think John Wayne said, he said, I'm not really an actor, I'm a reactor. I react to what people <laughs> Well, he said it like, well, I react to what people say. <laughs> um, and so, so, so in terms of your performance, I think it's much better if you're all together. Uh, you have more fun. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, a, it's more of a community if you're all working there together. But since we're professional actors, you, that's your job is to, if you're in there by yourself, to give them the same quality product as you give them you know, it's just not as much fun, really. And I don't, uh, nobody has explained to me yet why they ch it changed. Because now, just like the other day, Tuesday, when I was doing the, the new show, uh, they, they booked me for from 12.30 to 1.30. And I do my stuff. And as I'm leaving, I see another person getting off the elevator who's going to come in and do their lines, you know. And I, I don't know why, if it saves them money or, or what. But it's too bad. So, so is it possible you don't meet anyone from a show you've actually been on? Oh, nowadays? yeah. Sometimes not only the other actors, but the, the, the directors and the producers of people. Oh, wow. Like, well, the other day, one of the uh, one of the directors was in Seattle and one was in L.A. And I'm in New York. And you hear each other on the headphone. <laughs> I mean, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. Basically. 
Yeah, I've always wondered what the the reason would that would be for that. Uh, I would think you'd have so much more energy with yeah. you know at least especially if it's a small cast all being together and exactly. then it's just kind of infectious and you just feed off. Yeah, of it. the first time I ever noticed it was um, we did Thundercats and the other Rankin Bath shows in, from between eighty three and eighty eight something like that all together. And then in 2011, I, I'm sure you guys remember that we did a new Thundercats uh, mm-hmm. series. But that was done in, in uh, Burbank at Warner Brothers Ranch. And I played Claudius, Lionel's father. I was only on the first two or three episodes. So they flew me out to, to, to Burbank, out to L.A., you know. And I was, it was kind of cool, you know. I mean, it was filmed at, uh, recorded at Roy Disney Studios. You know, it was so cool. So I walk in and I see the I see the semicircle of microphones all set up. I go, okay, and we're there for one. I'm talking to the engineer who is from New York. They're all from New York. All the Disney engineers are from New York. And they were talking. And then at one point, the um, the director it wasn't Lee Doniker. Uh, I think she had passed by then. Sue somebody. She said, uh, "Larry, we really have to get started." And I said, "Oh, okay." Uh, the other actors aren't here. She said, they're not coming. It's just you today. I said, okay. I'm standing in the middle of five microphones, you know, and doing my thing. And then I leave. And she said, the others are coming tomorrow. It was so strange to me, but I said, okay, maybe that's how they do it in LA. But now I, <laughs> that was the beginning of this new thing. One person at a time. I, I enjoyed the second series, but I turned it off after three episodes once you were gone. So, oh. <laughs> who said that? Who was well, that? <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> that was Keith. <laughs> that was Keith. <laughs> uh, so you've done. I did too. By I did too. By the way, when it came. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then you did Claudus, and then you did Jaga for the Thundercats Roar. Yeah. What's next? What the, uh, Thundercats 4.0? Do you loop around and do one of the like? I want to be Chitara. <laughs> if they do another one, I want to be. <laughs> I can do it. There you go. I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> you are an actor. Yeah. I'm an actor. And a dance. <laughs> you guys really, uh, you guys really have good questions. You know, I do a lot of podcasts and interviews, and um, you know, it's usually the same old questions, which is fine. You guys seem to be professionals. Are you professional at this? Oh, no. just big fans, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, that, that's great because I'm, I'm I'm really having a good time here. That's all I'm trying to say. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. We're that's happy. Fair. Yes, we have made Lion of the King. <laughs> yes, you know, life goals achieved. Happy. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted to ask you something to follow up, sort of the the, uh, the business question or the the art of it. Like, it's coming from radio, uh, as far as like it looks like you know, just doing some research, you didn't have any like professional um, a- acting schooling. So you've learned to become an actor sort of on your own. So how do you, when you see the the drawings and the designs for these characters, you're going to do the voices for how, what is your process for deciding on a voice to give the director? Well, uh, good question. Um, um, lion of course, was just my, just my regular voice. In fact, they told us, they told us, uh, they being Rankin-Bass, we did the auditions at the Rankin-Bass, uh, Rankin Bass offices in uh, New York. And I just want to say one more thing. Um, I grew up watching Rankin Bass cartoons or animated shows, Frosty the Snowman, Burl Ives, you know, and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with Fred Astaire, you know. So when I got the call <laughs> saying you're going to be doing a thing for Rankin Bass, I'm like, oh my God. You know, it, it was touching. And yeah. um, um, so now, once again, I've diverted and I've forgotten the actual question. <laughs> you guys will get old. You'll, you'll go through this too. We feeling it already. So <laughs> five stories are the best part. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but, Beard's like half gray. So <laughs> what was the, the um, I'm sorry. I just was sort of wondering your acting process, you know, of going, of deciding a voice to oh, give to yes. director or how you're yeah. going to approach a character. <clears throat> well, they told us uh, um, when we went to the audience, we went to the audition. They auditioned two or 300 people in New York and LA. I may have said that before. Uh, and when I went to the audition, there were 10, 15 guys, you know, waiting for their turn to go in. And um, they told us that um, uh, for, for the uh, Thundercats, we don't want 
cartoon voices. We want human voice, regular voices. And if you think about it, Lionel's voice is just my voice. It's just a little more dramatic. Like I'm sitting here talking to you guys, and I say, uh, uh, "Sort of Omens" come to my hand. And I Lionel come on, <laughs> on TV. It sounds like "Sort of Omens" come to my hand. I Lionel command it. Yes, <laughs> sounds like the guy on Kill. TV. Then. That's that's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so they so that's what they said. Just human voices for the Thundercats, for the mutants. That's when you get to do the cartoon voices. Any actor will tell you, whether it's in in, on, in theater, movies, or animated shows, uh, actors love to play the bad guy because you get to really, <laughs> you know, as we call it in the business, chew the scenery and really go overboard, <laughs> you know, uh, like Jackal Man. So, so when I auditioned for Jackal Man, uh, it was, uh, we must get the Thundercats, yes. <laughs> and, 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 and the, uh, the lead, to the top guy, mutant, was Mumra, Earl Hammond. And he really went, ancient spirit of evil, <laughs> transform. <laughs> and we used to laugh at him because um, he was a dear man. But you know, on, 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 on the show, on screen, uh, when the character Mumra does that, this green drool comes out of his mouth. You remember that? <laughs> Earl, actually, Earl actually did that when he was doing the oh. law. <laughs> he get so... It got to the point where uh, when we, we were recording and the rest of us would look at the script and say, we'd tell each other, Mumra is going to do it in the next page. <laughs> so we'd all kind of move. <laughs> Because he would go, ancient spittle, and the spittle would come out of his mouth. <laughs> and, and in fact, he would, uh, like in the middle of it, go, ancient spirits of evil, trans, <laughs> wipe it off of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so we would all kind of move back away from the microphones. But uh, yeah, doing, doing um, the bad guys, it's always always more <laughs> i think we may have cracked the code on why there's not multiple people recording anymore yes exactly Maybe in Ra's performance. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know i'll never forget at one point i said to lynn lipton who's chitar and uh, peter newman we were having lunch together and, and uh, in between we would record uh two shows a day uh four days a month Thursdays and Fridays. We do two shows Thursday, two days, two shows Friday. And uh, I remember having lunch at one time. I, I said, to my, I had just gone to the, other, the night before, or a couple nights before, I had gone to a Gallagher con, uh, concert. You remember Gallagher? <laughs> and I said, I'm going to get... Yeah, I'm gonna with get, the watermelon? Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm going to, I'm going to next, next session, I'm going to bring a long piece of plastic, uh, you know, uh, Plastic wrapper, and we'll stand behind that when Earl. <laughs> <laughs> I never did it. <laughs> That's great. Well, I had a question about your schedule back then. So, if you you're recording two days, yeah, a week, a, a month, um, a month, a month. Yeah. Okay. Reason for that, if I may, uh, Kevin. Yes, yeah, please. Is is when the when we first started recording, we would record two or three days a week. Because they already they already had the scripts ready to go, so we would. But then after the show was on for thirteen weeks, I'm sure you guys are aware that you sell shows to networks thirteen weeks, thirteen shows at a time. I don't know if you knew that, but that's what it, that's what it is. So we rec quickly recorded thirteen of them, you know. But then after that, you have to leave time for the animators to animate new things. You have to allow time for the uh, editors do this and all that, you know. So it, got, it, it, it came down to um, a Thursday and a Friday once a month. And that gave everybody time to, to do their thing, you know. So I'm sorry, what was the rest of your question? Oh, it was just, um, I was reading some interviews and uh, they were saying that some of the fellow voice actors were saying that you'd come in tired and sneak in a nap occasionally. <laughs> Because you had a morning radio show. I was just wondering how busy was your schedule back then doing a morning radio show and voice acting and I'm guessing doing other uh, 
serial commercials as well. Yeah, that was a very busy time for me, the, the mid 80s, because I was doing a radio show from from uh, 5.30 to 10 in the morning on WH. Oh, wow. Okay. And I was doing a television show, a game show, five nights a week. Was that the bowling one? <laughs> bowling for dollars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, it. Right. Yeah. And then uh, in between, I was running around doing commercials for Cocoa Puffy. It was really, I mean, I my, my kids. Did you sleep at all ever? <laughs> sometimes on the floor during the recording sessions. In fact, there, <laughs> there is a video on, uh, on the internet uh, where recording they, they my microphone they go to my microphone and nobody there and they pan down and i'm on the floor <laughs> like this <laughs> yeah because i would um for, well at the same time we were doing all this i was doing a, a game show and i was a, a member of the cast of the imus in the morning show i don't know if you guys ever heard of that mm. oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. sure yeah. so New York, you know that um, i would yeah. my typical day <laughs> as you asked my typical day was i would get up at like 3 30 in the morning and wow yeah and at about 4 15 i would get in the car and drive down to secaucus new jersey where the imus show was done and uh we'd finish that at 10 o'clock and then i would get in my car and i go to, to manhattan and do whatever i had to do auditions recording sessions you know until 5 5 30 or whatever and then I would drive back home to Connecticut an hour and 15 minutes. Wow. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I was young, you know, I was 32 years old. So, you know, but it was, it was, it was really a tough thing. And I was making more money than God. So I, I you know, you can't say no to <laughs> I mean, that's a good reason to do something. <laughs> yeah. Well, in this business, you know, uh, like I was doing really well then in, all the other actors are saying, my God, what are you trying to make all the money? <laughs> I said, but in this business, <laughs> yes. you, may be, yes. you may be doing all kinds of things. And then two months later, you don't get a job for a year. You know, it's a tough business. I've been so yeah. fortunate uh, that, that it's gone that way for me. You want to hear a funny story about uh, my driving home after one of those things? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Well, you're not going to say no, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've heard driving uh, stories no, before. Interview uh, over, guys. Was it in the Thunder Tank? <laughs> it should have been the Whiskers. Um, uh, it was. It was. A, it was a Friday, and back in the eighties. And um, I, I told you all the stuff I was doing at the time. I was in this, this. well on Fridays. I did the radio show in the morning. Then I went to Madison Square Garden and taped five half-hour game shows. Okay long day. I had been up since 3.30 in the morning. So we would do five half hour episodes. And then I, I drove home and the, and I had to drive in the, because at that time there were no trains early enough in the morning to get me down. There. Now there are you know, at 3 a.m. But uh, so then I had to drive all the way home to Connecticut. Well, what I would do a lot of times is, uh, you know, get not too far from home. But I just had to take a break. So I would pull off into one of these uh, oasis rest areas, things, you know. And uh, I would I would uh, put my seat back and open the window, leave the car running, leave the air conditioner on. And I would just take an, a nap for 10, 15 minutes. And I'm the kind of person I can do that. I can, if I sleep for 15 minutes, I'm good to go for another couple hours. You know, some people can't do it, but I could do it. And uh, one time I pull in there. And uh, I said, I'm situated and, uh, and I go to sleep for about 15 minutes. But I didn't realize it was while I was, I was asleep, this 18 wheeler pulled in right in front of me and backed up to within about close to my bumper. <laughs> <laughs> now, 15 minutes later, I wake up. Ah! I, <laughs> I thought I had fallen asleep on the highway. And this was the last second of my life. I'm <laughs> this, this truck, you know? So I go, ah! And then I realize, and I look over at all these people at the gas pumps, they're going, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, I'm okay. But it, 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 it took them about 10 minutes to pry my fingers off the steering wheel. You know, I, I that, was, <laughs> sure. that was it. <laughs> 
don't and know if I can I segue had... from that. But uh, <laughs> no. I, I, where do you go from that? Right? Was it yellow Lionel's voice when you did that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it may have been. It may have been. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I don't. Know <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a, a question. You've um, you've been in the industry for so many years. You've done so many different kinds of voice work. How do you feel that um, now? Um, in many ways, I find voice actors, um, you know, very uh, skilled and specialized in their craft. Uh, but it seems as if studios are going for larger name celebrities yeah. Um, yeah. just because uh, they're trying to attract an audience. Um, but they don't. They don't necessarily have the skill, or I don't think sometimes they convey the emotions as well. I just wanted to know what your thoughts were on that. Well, this started happening about, I don't know, 20, 20 years ago or so, uh, that movie stars and people like that started doing commercials. Back in the day, mm -hmm. up until that time, big name actors would never do commercials. I mean, that was beneath them, you know. Uh, a lot of them, I, I've talked to them, a lot of them said, well, the thing is, I don't want my f fans to think I need the money. You know? <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, I make as much money as you do, just doing the voices, you know. But, uh, yeah, they would, a lot of people would not do, as a matter of fact, Frank Sinatra, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, did some commercials for which he got paid millions of dollars for a, uh, a wine or something. But the, the caveat was they could never show them in the United States. They only show them in Japan. Mm, wow. Because he didn't want to. <laughs> like, can you imagine this Frank Sinatra doing a commercial? What is he, broke? Yeah. You know. <laughs> so It's got bills to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, uh, Jack, there. I think there probably are some big name actors you see that aren't that really good at the voiceover or, you know, the camera or whatever, but Hey, listen, they're in show business too. They got a right to, to you know, and, and those people, uh, what is going to turn down $3 million a year, you know, because they don't think that they're, you know, to beneath them. <laughs> no, they're not going to turn that down. It just makes, it makes it a, a little harder for those of us uh, before that time. Those of us who were the voice actors were a very small group, you know, getting all mm -hmm. getting all the work. And uh, I suppose it's, it's only fair that, uh, that you know, the big name actors, you know, bastards. <laughs> Stick to their roles. Stay yeah, out of have, yeah get over on your side. That's a healthy attitude. Very Has healthy. there been any voice actors you haven't worked with that you wish you could have? Oh, that's a tough question because there's so many people I'd like to work with. I, I've had, I've been so lucky to work with so many great people um, in, in all the things I've done, you know, movies and TV shows and voiceover. Um, I really can't pick out one person I'd like to, I wish I had worked for. I think my question kind of pairs with Kevin's. Um, I have a lot of other boring ones, but hopefully this is not a boring one. Um, is there anything you would love to do or would have loved to do that you haven't had the chance to yet? I can't think of anything, Keith, because like I said, I've, I've, I've done something, mostly small things in all the areas of the business. I had a, a, I had a couple of records out, some uh, comedy albums. I had, I, I've been in, uh, on, I was on soap operas back in the late seventies. And, and I've been in a couple of movies that you'd never hear of that, independent films and everything. But I've, and then the voiceover and now the mocap and everything. I actually. So you've been in front of the camera acting then? Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was on a couple of soap operas back in the late seventies, you know, just play, I played a waiter in one and I played a killer in another one. <laughs> it's fun, but I'll tell you, yeah. but I learned from that after those, I told my agent, no more on camera. I don't want to do on camera, just a voiceover. And then, well, the game show came along and that was on camera, but that was another whole thing. You know, it was not acting. It was just right. being a game yeah. show host, you know. Hey, how you doing, everybody? Okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, the reason for that is, is when, when you do a voiceover, first of all, you can dress 
and t-shirts. You know, there's no heavy lifting. You know what I mean? You, you go in and it's, it's okay, go and then you go to the next one. When you do on camera, like on the soap operas, God, you get there at seven o'clock in the morning. I mean, I only had like five lines, but you get there at seven o'clock in the morning. And then uh, you do a first read through. Everybody sits around a table and reads their lines, you know. And then you, uh, then they start doing um, makeup. They, get, they have the women come in, do their hair and do the makeup and stuff. They have the guys, they're doing your makeup and all this kind of stuff. And uh, then you take a break for lunch. You come back and now you got the first walk through. So the cameraman can know exactly where you're going to be. And so that you know how to find your mark and things like that. You do a walk through. And then you do a dress rehearsal. Now it's six o'clock at night and you do the actual take. So you got 12 hours that you're there. And it's just, you know, for someone who's used to making his living doing it 20 minutes here, half an hour here. <laughs> And then you maybe go shoot some pool for a while and then you do <laughs> or have a couple of pops, you know. Uh, I just said, no, it's, I don't like it. I don't like that. So. Oh, well, Larry, I just want to say, I, I want to be respectful of your time. I know you said 45 minutes. I appreciate um, that. I, I appreciate that, but I'm having such a good time. I, I you know, let's oh. go. I will <laughs> oh, the for a second while I get some water. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, you is, notice he said uh, pop. Ro- I end. did. Talk, uh, the subject <laughs> is Rhode Island. It's neither a road nor an island. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> pop yeah, I still don't know. I was going to ask if it's dinner or supper. Or yep. kitty corner or all that other nonsense. <laughs> Caddy Wumpus, too. Get Don't forget about that. that. You're just making up words now, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or the more words of Thor, all words are made up. <laughs> That's true. Every word is made up. <laughs> did I hear Caddy? Did I hear, did I hear Caddy Wumpus? Caddy Wumpus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's made Western words. It's a made up word. It's nonsense. I used to hear it all the time when I was a kid, but I haven't heard it for a long time. That- That's what my grandmother would always say. That's Caddy Wumpus. Yeah, Caddy Wumpus. Yeah, me too. Kevin Ke- is to be keeping a it alive. My family, uh, whether it's is it Caddy cornered or Kitty cornered. Yes, you know, yes. Right? <laughs> Similar. <laughs> yep, we've had that same argument. Our, our <laughs> you say our family said Caddy corner for what's worth. I think we were a Kitty corner family. Ah, hmm. Well, no more. <laughs> you haven't grown up yet. All right, I think this interview is over. Now. <laughs> Do you say dinner or supper? I get teased for saying supper still. As so. you should. <laughs> yes. We said supper. Yeah. Because. Oh, you know, oh, it's okay. oh. It's okay now. <laughs> you're that Keith? You're that Keith? <laughs> well, you're from Illinois, too. 30 years of Kevin's life has just been validated. <laughs> well, he's, Kevin's from Illinois, too. So that's what we said in Illinois, right? Mm-hmm. Time is supper. Yep. <laughs> For, for our family, it was um, supper was at four uh, four fifteen, because my dad worked in a factory, and uh, he got off at four o'clock. The factory had a whistle that blew at every time the shifts changed. You know, and you could hear it all over town. So, like, if I went out to play ball or something, my wife would say, "Be home, be home by the whistle." <laughs> Everybody said, "Be home by the four o'clock whistle," because Dad's going to be hungry when he gets home. <laughs> How did we get into this? Did I? Say- I don't know. Pop. Kevin's Kevin said this. Yeah. That, that. <laughs> pop, pop, pop was the uh, gateway uh, into the uh, colloquialisms. Well, my, my understanding is that, um, like in the old days, that dinner was to some people, like in New York, there was a dinner and then supper was later. Like if you're going out, no, no. Supper was like a family having having their supper at five, six. Nine. If you're going to dinner, you went at seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. I don't know. So you know, I just listened to uh, a podcast called um, Word Matters, uh, and they actually <laughs> said exactly what you said, Larry. Um, they actually made the distinction between supper and dinner. Um, they looked historically when it really? was used, and just as you wrote. Exactly what it is. So, is, did, is that they said what I said? 
Yes, exactly. They said supper was an earlier meal, and then dinner was, was much yeah. later in the day, yeah. and and because they they went to people yeah. uh, to each other, I was like, wow, I would have apologized to Kevin <laughs> at that. Never. Point. Why should I? But but now here in open forum, you know, uh, having you kind of cleared it up for us, I will say he is worthy <laughs> after all. Of no. Thank you. Thank you. No. I like how we've devolved into etymology with celebrities. It's a game show now. <laughs> Make the celebrity guess the etymology of the word. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, I'm sure you would agree. We never had brunch in Illinois. No. <laughs> was it a thing? We don't have brunch here. Be home for brunch? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I've told them about, I think we had a corn fest in DeKalb because DeKalb corn. Yes, of course. Uh, listen, yeah, yeah. Illinois corn and soybeans. But you drive, That's through, the thing. you drive through Illinois and it's 100 miles of corn and soybeans and then a little town. And in every field, it's DeKalb. Yeah, I think the first time Keith drove across the country, he came back and he's like, did you know that it's really flat in the Midwest? I, and I'm like, I've been that. saying this. All right, you know what? Since you said that, I'm, the first time Kevin came here, we went driving on the LIE and he's like, well, the exits aren't numbered one per mile. It's like, yeah, dude, because we have things here. We have more <laughs> exits. We can't do it every one mile. <laughs> yeah, Illinois, Illinois is still one of those places where there are distances between towns in in terms of it's not a megalopolis you know there's this town yeah. Yeah. 10 miles away there's another town that's funny <laughs> <laughs> uh to get back a little on subject i was gonna say Kevin, i think you were i think you were asking uh, something before i interrupted, interrupted um fully off what's the about rails? generational stuff um I, it's like a two-part question were did you have kids yeah, I know. I'm annoying. Did you have kids that were of age to watch Thundercats while you were uh, voice acting it? Because I would think that'd be like a really cool dad mm -hmm. moment of being like, that's me on, on you know, as Lion O. Well. And my second part. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you do the first part. Yeah, because you know I'll forget. I'll have to ask you again. What was the second part? I, I would too. So. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Well, my oldest daughter, Carrie. Who's a very successful actress? You may have heard of her, Carrie. That was my second part of the question. Part of the thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, she was. Let's see, we did an eighty-two. So she was thirteen merged. when Thundercats started. Uh, my other two um, uh, were. Uh, let's see, they were born in eighty-four and eighty-eight, so they were pr pretty young then. But the funny thing about oh, okay. funny thing about my kids, and I've I've talked to other actors, and they they say the same thing um, that. People ask me, it must have been, your kids must have been so excited that you were this and you were that. Is it? Not really. Uh, any actor will tell you this. You're not, a, you're not a star to your kids. You're dad. You know, and sometimes they even get a little, <laughs> even get a little pissed off that, that other people come up to you, you know, and watch your autograph and stuff. Uh, and my, my biggest memory is with all three of my kids, I love to read to them at night, you know. I always thought it was very important and it was fun for me until <laughs> I think it was scary. Uh, and I'm reading a book to her and I said, <clears throat> and the evil witch said, I'm going to read it. And she said, dad, <laughs> just read the book. Read the book. <laughs> and the other kids too, they didn't want to hear this crap. Did you know? Oh, I see you do funny voices. That's great. Read the story. Oh, <laughs> so I thought that would have been the best part. <laughs> <laughs> but, they're, but, but they're all very every kind of treat yeah yeah they're all very proud of me now and, uh, and i'm proud of them well yeah the second part of that was like what was it like seeing your daughter go on to be successful kind of following your footsteps yeah. of being on tv yeah. having i think a couple of music videos just i she's a uh, trudy on uh reno 911 yeah for people yeah who don't know. among other many other things Many other yeah, things. Yeah, I'm so proud of her. I'm proud of I'm proud of all my kids. I'm so proud of Carrie. Uh, you know, it's funny when um, when she was about uh, eight or ten, I used to take her and my other kids when they were certainly into the city with me. If I had a, a day where I knew that I only had a couple of appointments and, and stuff like that, so I would take them into Manhattan with me. 
and they all loved it. And at one point, Carrie said, Dad, I want to be an, an, an actress. I want to be an And she was 10 or 11 years old. And I thought, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would never say no. I would never tell her no. And anyway, I said, I'll tell you what. Let's ask Uncle Don. Don Buckwald was and is my agent, one of the top agents in the, in the business. And we were also personal friends, family friends. We would go to his house on Christmas Eve and everything. He would come to our house. And, and so I said, I'll tell you what. Talk with Uncle Don. And whatever he thinks, I'll go along with. And I said, I promised her, because she was very smart at that age, I promise you, I'm not going to prepare him by saying, tell her this or tell her that. You know, I'm, I'm not. So we went to his office, and, 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 and she came out, and she said, Dad, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in school, you know, just do lots of plays in school and all of that. And then when I'm out of school, I'm going to try to be an actress. I, I said, thank you, Don. Thank you. That's, <laughs> that's what I thought. But I didn't want to, I, I never would dampen my one of my kids' enthusiasm about something, you know. But in this particular case, I knew that there, there are uh, lots and lots of people who were child actors, and they're fine. It's just, but there is many of them that just it ruined their lives. It just became, it just, for one reason or another, parents pushed them or, you know, they got into the business and the, and the directors scum, whatever. And I really would have rather she didn't go into, because of the rejection, you know, it's, you have to be somebody who can take a rejection and not take it personally. You know, you go to an audition and you do your, okay, I get this part. I say no, 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 and then, and you do that. You, you do that a lot. Do that a lot, and you have to be the kind of person who says they're wrong. I know. I know. I can do it. You know. And she did. My son, for example, uh, who's now thirty-five. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Carrie is fifty-three, and and I'm thirty-eight. I don't know how in the hell that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Tan my son Tanner wanted to be in a uh, voice actor. And so Uncle Don took him on as a client. So for a year, he went to auditions. He did this. He did a couple of small, you know, things on radio commercials and stuff. But after a year, uh, realized this is not for me and everything. But he tried it, you know. That's good. Yeah. 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 I mean, what would be your, I guess you know, advice to aspiring actors and voice actors, like you just have to hang in there and you have to really want to do it? No. Or would there be... My advice for voice actors would be, no, forget it, because we don't need any more... <laughs> <laughs> we need more plumbers. <clears throat> no, my, no, my advice would be, if you, if you have... Check yourself. Do you have... Is it a passion for you? Or is it a flighty idea. Yeah, I'd like to be an act actor. Because uh, then you don't realize as a youngster that it, it's glamorous. And everything, but you don't realize the work, the the rejection, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, my advice would be if you have, if you, if you've got to do it. See, most people who are actors uh, when they were young, they had to do it. It wasn't like that would be cool. You know what I mean? I've got to do it. And I'll take anything. I'll do anything to do it. Doesn't guarantee that you're going to make it. <laughs> right? But you need that. You need that passion to do it. Have you been rejected from an audition oh, that you thought oh, you nailed? Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kevin's killing the interview. Kevin's killing the interview. There's no log We're off, actually. <laughs> yeah. Of course. We don't really know. <laughs> uh, well, Lino can have a little bit of a failure. We all can have just a little bit of a... <laughs> it's a lesson there. <laughs> very good, Kevin. There's a lesson there. 
Lionel was rejected. The staff psychologist to sign off on that, like the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, um, well, with let's say with voiceovers, you know, you go in an audition, and um, if they if they want you, they within a day or two they call your agent and say, you know, we want him. And then he calls you and says you got the, you got the part. Uh, if you don't hear from them, you didn't get the part. You know. Um, so you have to learn to live with that fact. That, and sometimes you'll go to lots of auditions and it's no, 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 no. And the tough thing is a lot of people have the, the passion in their heart. But God bless them. They don't have the talent. That They don't have it. Because they want it so badly. And I would hate to be one of the people who tells them no. You know? Because I understand that, that, that but I, I, I think I'm good. And no, you're not. You know, it's, it's a ter- it must be terrible for them. But um, that's the it's the business. You know, it's the business. I mean, you don't you don't have to say any specific projects, but do you? Is it hard for you sometimes to watch animated stuff and be like, they this actor was probably not the best voice or role for something you're watching or can you like do you do you see behind the curtains when you're watching things i don't i i i don't know i mean there sometimes i will see something and i'll kind of go Oof. but not like i don't watch for that or anything you know here's the thing today in the business oh, how can i put it there um <laughs> Anybody can be a voiceover. You go on the internet and there are these places say, we'll, we'll get you a job. And it, well, they, they can't, they, you know, they can't, but, um, and sometimes for some reason they do get through and you hear it. And as a, as a professional, I go, it's not very good. It's, they're not professional. <laughs> But I don't cringe, you know, I don't go, ooh, I, I, it's just, it's the way it is today, you know. See, today, uh, producers, and by producers, I mean people who are making the product, they know that there are people who work, they will work for under scale, under seg after scale. And there are a lot of People go online and will audition online for something. It's a, it's a project. It, it, it may not be a network commercial or something like that, but it's a job. And, and um, the producers know that those people are not top quality. They're not in the union. Not that being in the union makes you top quality, but it's usually a, an indication. You know. But they have a budget. So let's use that person who may not be our, wouldn't be our first choice if we were looking at union people and all that. So there's a lot of that. And, you know, God bless him, those people who, who get some work doing it like, like local commercials, local, you know, local TV commercials and stuff like that. But um, then there again, uh, you have the problem nine times out of 10, they're not going to get any other jobs, but their hopes are up. Now they're, now their hopes are up. Now I did this, I did that. And, and that's great, but they're never going to go any, anywhere else, but in their hearts, they think they're professionals. And I think sometimes it delays their finding themselves in a real career that they would be good at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah, certainly. I, I did this, you know, you're 18, 19 years old. Well, I did this, I did that. And for two or three years, you'll keep that thought in your mind, but you keep getting rejected. And you get in, uh, when you could have been pursuing, you know, what, what you are good at. That's I'm being so philosophical here. And that's not, <laughs> that's not what your podcast is about, is it? Hey, you're Jaga. Give us all the knowledge. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. No, I was only Jaga. You want the cheat codes. I was only Jaga twice. Once on that horrible remake, Thundercats Roar. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jack. I said, you don't respect tradition. Say, You're a good father. He wouldn't even be watching it, but let's not. Go <laughs> Jack, Jack, I want to tell you. I want to tell you the story of that. You guys are all familiar with it. Thundercats Roar came out a couple of years mm-hmm. ago. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I signed the contract for that before I saw anything about it, any illustration, anything. Because it was Warner Brothers, you know, who owned right, yeah. They owned the franchise now, and I did uh, Claudius on the 2011 reboot, and I thought that was a. Mm-hmm. I thought it was good, not great. I thought it was that was very good. Yeah, it was yeah. good. I couldn't believe it didn't uh, last. The reason for that, by the See. way, I found out it was the toy sales were not that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, as yeah. an actor, that killed. But, yeah, the yeah. show was excellent. I so it's, it's a shame it didn't continue. Thank you, Kev. Uh, see, once again, I've forgotten the... Uh, uh, Thundercats Roar. Oh, yeah. Roar. You signed a contract? <laughs> Before I saw anything about it, and I thought, oh, shit. Because I, I have a very strong f- feeling of protection of the legacy of Thundercats. It's become iconic. It's become an iconic series. It's, you know... And and um, I felt badly that I that I did that. Fortunately, not many people saw it. <laughs> Silver lining there. Yeah. It's just so horrible, you know. But I, I tried watching it as a super fan, <laughs> and I couldn't even get into it. It was just yeah. I had no clue what was happening. It's yeah. Clearly, I wasn't in the demographic it was meant for, but which doesn't usually stop you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, if you guys are going to fight, I might as well leave. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, it was horrible. <laughs> what are you going to do? That begs the question, who really signs off on something like that? Because you, you've you probably had a lot of experience with people like us, fans, super fans. Mm-hmm. There, there are a lot of people out there who probably have great ideas and would come out with, you know, e- even the basic you know, structure of what a, a new you know, Thundercats 4.0 or the, you know, yeah. would be. Yeah. And then that gets done and you say, so, so who was that? Like how, how right. did I buy all the different, you know, gatekeepers in, mm-hmm. in, in, in production to say that's, that's the one we're going with. Yeah. It's because I heard that the, the second one, the 2011 was made by fans, which you could tell because everyone looked like it. Yeah. yeah. It was really good. So yeah, you got to wonder. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kevin. The second, I mean, the 2011 reboot. Yeah. Yeah, that one was. It seemed to be made with love. Oh, yeah. Yes, it was. It was. Yes, it was. Um, uh, Dan Norton, who was the head writer and all that. When, when I told you the story about when it, they brought me out to Warner Brothers Ranch to do my part, I played Claudius, mm-hmm. two or three episodes, but. When I went out there, I learned from him and all the people there, they were such fans of Thundercats. And the they were all into uh, honoring the legacy of, of the Code of Thundera and all that. So they didn't want to make a new series, uh, uh, you know, change the whole overview of Thundercats. And and uh, I really appreciated that, you know. I thought it was a good series. I was I was shocked that it was, but I, as I might have mentioned before, it was uh, the toy sales were not that good. Capitalism. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a nice fresh take, though. I mean, it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's you know what that's that's business. That's that's business. It, it boiled down, it is a business. You know, we can all say, oh, I love this. Don't change it. I love that. Don't change it. If they're not making money, the networks or whatever, who can blame them to say, let's let's kill this and do something? It's true. Yeah. It's sort of a precursor to what's happening now with a lot of shows getting canceled because everything's gone to streaming and they don't know how to make money off it yes, yet. Yeah. But looking back, that's how shows like this made money. They, 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 they sold tons of toys to kids like us who begged our parents, you know, to spend all the money on and those toys. we spend all our own money. <laughs> <clears throat> You're right, John. And, 
that was that really that really worked uh, worked well because like I'm yeah. thinking like how do you get something like that made now? You got it. Got to have the toys too. Yeah. Uh, and man, I mean, just I, I'm a, I'm actually when I was preparing for, for this, I, I I asked my parents how much of the toys they had kept from that era. And I'm embarrassed for myself how much I must have pestered my parents. <laughs> um, but it made the show. So now I'm very glad that I did this yeah. because it allowed yeah. uh, the actors to get paid and the shows to get made. <laughs> do, you, do you guys know the story? I'm sure you do because you guys have done your homework. I can tell the story about um, it's all over the Internet. about um, When I went to Toys R Us one time. and Oh, yes. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should I tell it again? Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So good. The show had been on for um, more than a year, and I went to Toy. It was near Christmas, and I went to Toys R Us. Rest in peace, Toys R Us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so I had been there a month or two earlier because I had little kids, but this time I walked into Toys R Us, and there was were there. Previous time, there had been one aisle of Thundercats, an aisle of He-Man, an aisle of Ninja Turtles, whatever. This time I walked in, and there are three aisles, left and right, of Thundercats stuff. That's when I knew the show was a big hit, you know. And I'm walking down one of the aisles, and these two, there's these two kids, probably 10, 12 boys, and uh, one of them said, uh, I'm going to get Panthro. He's the coolest one. The other guy said, I'm, I'm going to get Tiger. He's, I'm going to be, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> one guy said, you know, guys, you should get Lionel. He's the one who says, Sword of Omens, come to my hand. They looked at me like was some like a pervert, or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So I just kind of, you know, snuck away. And as I'm walking away, I hear one kid say, he didn't even sound like Lion. Oh. <laughs> I thought, you little shit. If you, only, <laughs> if you only knew you'd be pooping your pants right now. But I didn't. <laughs> And you know I hope that out there somewhere, as you've told the story, that kid grown up now has heard it and, like, and feels bad forever. Yes. <laughs> he's probably seen, because I mentioned this from a lot of podcasts destiny. and stuff, he's probably seen, and I still to this day wish, I hope that one of those kids sees me some or texts me or on the internet and says, I was one of those kids. I would love that. If you're one of those, <laughs> Waiting for that apology. If you're one of those guys... Contact. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I have to go. My God, it's uh, we've been doing this for four hours. <laughs> but again, for you, it's like, I'm sure. <laughs> again, again, it's because I've enjoyed talking to you guys. You guys are you're cool. Is that oh. you cool guys? Oh, thank you. Guys, you're cool. It's quite the accomplish. It's quite yes. the honor to talk to you. Thank I, you so I can't much. tell you. Thank you. How important Thundercats yes. was in my life. Oh, so. thank you. James, Keith, Kevin, you notice I'm reading this. John and That's fine. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Late to the party, Jack. But I, 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 do, thank I do you. Need thank to. you. <laughs> Dance, thank you so much for joining us. I, I hope you enjoyed our time with, with it's great Larry Kenny. Um, <laughs> it's Lion O. And. Um, Larry, just before you go, before you go, is there anywhere you want people to go to find? I'm on, I'm on Facebook and and um, Instagram. I don't twit, <laughs> <laughs> but and can I just say thank you guys so much? Uh, you know, oh, our honor. I, I appreciate it. And if I may, uh, um, was- Thundercats fans over the years, God, thank you so much. Can you imagine? I talk, to, I talk about this with, with uh, Lynn Lipton and Peter Newman from the show. I mean, we always say to each other, can you imagine, what is it, almost 40 years later, people still want to talk to us about, about Thundercats. They still come to Comic-Cons and things like that. It's amazing. So thank you. I'm going to love you guys forever. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, oh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, that's my line. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can I go eat now? Yes, yes. As listening audience, thank you so much. And if you have thoughts about this episode, please put them in the comments on the Facebook group. We thank you so much for listening, and we will talk to you on the next episode.